Howdy folks, Kevin here, coming to you today with a book update on the Web App Testing Guidebook. This is a book that I've been working on for over a year now, and it is finally coming around to being completed. I'm currently at 95% complete, so I've pretty much finished all the content that I want to write for it. Just need to do some finishing touches and some updates, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. But before we get into book updates, I do want to give a brief overview on what this book is about. Well, it's basically UI testing of real-world websites using WebDriver IO. If you can read, you know it says that right there, but it's worth summarizing the summary. Uh, essentially, it's how to do UI testing, functional testing, automated testing, uh, whatever you want to call it, Selenium testing maybe if you um, are a little bit old school. Um, of testing websites and it tests a demo site called conduit which i have shown over here and we'll get into that in just a minute but i've got a short description i'm not going to go through that because it takes a little bit of time but you can see the table of contents as well and we start off by getting into uh kind of the basics of webdriver io and ui testing some requirements around it how it all functions in general uh a then we jump into a real world app which talks about this website which again i'll talk about in just a second uh, we go through site loading and navigation selectors waiting for elements custom functions jump into page objects if you're unfamiliar with page objects it kind of steps you through the very basics of it and we get pretty complicated later on including how to share common page object functionality this uses the javascript extends and class keywords uh, testing complex inputs, which is a very, very important part of testing and something that a lot of people trip up with. Managing user sessions using uh, API calls and tokens that you store in sessions and cookies and such like that. Creating page components, which is a more advanced form of page objects. And finally, generating data for testing via API calls, which is pretty Pretty advanced topic, but it can be very powerful if you are looking for that sort of thing. If you want to get a quick intro to it, you can read a free sample, which includes the first two main chapters of the book. I talk about a basic update of why read the book, why use WebDriver IO, some technical details. I'm going to mention real quick that uh, I do have some to-do notes in here, one of them being I need to update this to be WebDriver IO version 6 instead of version 5. Uh, I started writing this a year ago, and that's when it was version 5 at the time, but it's sin they've since released version 6, and I do want to get the book updated to be that. But I also don't want to work on getting it updated right now and then make other technical updates and then have to go back and update it again. So I'm kind of waiting till that that's the final piece of the puzzle to, to slide right in to uh, the full picture and make a complete puzzle, I hope. What a weird analogy. Anyway, you will see that there are some to-dos in the content if you do check out this book. Um, some other things you can notice that there is, I, I just noticed this right now, um, a bug in my code, which is something that I'm also gonna be going through and updating. Uh, I mentioned that I still need to do some updates. This is one of those, is fixing any sort of bugs. I'm actually going to make a note about this right now so that it's fixed by the time you see this video. Okay, well, that should be updated soon. It hasn't updated on this page yet, but it is publishing, so it should be fixed by the time that you see it if you choose to check it out. Let's take a look through some of the examples and some of the code that we get into. Uh, we, uh, as normal, have our usual configuration file. Nothing too crazy here. I do uh, make use of chance.js and then I also provide a seed for chance.js and I talk a bit about why I do this. You really don't necessarily have to do this. It's not some super powerful function, but I did want to use it as an example of how you can use third-party libraries, incorporate them into WebDriver IO to really extend the functionality of the tool. I don't get into any sort of services. I definitely want to do that as people have requested it, but it's just a little bit too advanced of a topic for this initial book. And I want to get the book finished and published and out in people's hands before doing that. I may come back and do a second second part of uh, this book that does get into more complicated usage. Nothing too crazy here. I also get into using before hooks and how you can use that neat little set networks 
conditions trick that you can do here. Uh, here again is that chance, and I also get into using an API reference. I mentioned uh, that you can do uh, some API calls, and I talk about how to do that. So that's our configuration file. Into our tests, we have our normal specs. If I look at the tag test, this is probably one of the more complicated or the most complicated example that I get into that brings together a whole lot of different topics. Um, it doesn't start out this complicated. It starts out looking, this is about where it starts out is uh, this navigation page. And in fact, uh, we delete this test at the uh, by the end of the book. I have it here just because I didn't delete it in this code repo because it's, uh, it's pretty simple. Um, one thing that I do want to update is WebDriver IO has a new function or a new functionality in version six called expect, and it allows you to write better assertions. So if we look back at this, we do expect browser.getTitle to equal conduit. It would be even cooler if we could say expect browser to have title conduit. And uh, so I want to go back into the book and make that update because that assertion, those expect assertions weren't available when I first started or they weren't quite formalized as they are now. And now they're super easy to use. Uh, and so I want to add that to here. Um, right now it's using Chai. I might stick with using Chai. I may not need it actually. Um, I do want to actually mention how to have a third party assertion library because they can have some pretty helpful stuff, including include. How funny. Um, so anyway, uh, that's that's one of the other updates I want to make is to use this expect library. But yeah, this is kind of we start off really basic, just go to a uh, basic page, get the title, click a link, and then get the URL. A lot of this is just talking about the fundamentals of WebDriver IO. And now to our more complicated test here, we have uh, the idea of fixtures to define certain uh, set constants. We have a tag, which is a page object inside of that tag. Jump there. It extends the home page object inside of the home page object. It extends the generic page object. So it's just page objects all the way down. It also uses these component page ob or component objects. No, they're not really page objects because they don't define full pages, but um, these also exist and they extend components and stuff like that. And you can pass in constructors to them. And so I do talk a fair bit about the JavaScript code needed to use your class in the extends, uh, how we can use constructors, how we can call super inside of those constructors, how you can use super inside of a function itself. So I get into kind of the technical details of JavaScript that you really need to know in order to do more complicated testing and more complicated, but also better, what's the word? better organized testing, basically, uh, less repetitive code and, and more optimization of your code. It helps keep it a lot cleaner. So I get into all of that back up here. So we also go into using browser.call to make API calls to create data, to create test data that we want to use in order to run our tests. I talk about hooks. So you see we're using before hooks and after hooks. Here again, I want to update those assertions use deep equal things like that. So pretty complicated. Also a, a lot, actually, let me jump forward. There we go. Um, using these custom wait until functions or normal wait for load functions, things that are already part of WebDriver IO. So I kind of, uh, hopefully I get into pretty deep details, but also things that are still approachable, accessible to uh, most folks out there that hopefully doesn't get too, too detailed or technical, I guess I should say. So that code repo is out there for you to check out. I'll link to it in the description if you want to look at it. Um, let's take a quick look at the demo site itself. Um, this is called Conduit. It's part of the real world demo app. It's basically a real world demo app. And what real world demo app, it's a set of functionality requirements that is used to build a specific app using a whole bunch of different front ends and a whole bunch of different backends, and you can tie those together. The one I'm using is Vue for the front end and Node Express for the backend, but I'm using my own custom one. 
And I do talk in the book about how to get all that installed in the demo or the real world app uh, so that you can run this yourself. It's recommended that you use Docker to get that set up because it's actually pretty simple. As long as you have Docker installed, you create a simple Docker compose file and then just run Docker compose up and you have this full website running locally. I actually still have mine uh, running from before. This is my local one, so it shows you how to, to do that. Um, if you want, if you don't even want to check out this book, but you need a good website to test, this is uh, going to be available. Um, the data on it gets reset uh, once every 24 hours. Uh, it runs at some time during the night, according to where the server that it's hosted on. Uh, but it is available for you. You can create new articles. You can create new users. You can create new tags. Do pretty much anything you want on it because it all gets reset to this basic uh, a setting. And that's the same thing when you set it up locally. Uh, there's a way that you can reset everything if you want. So that about covers everything that I wanted to talk about and uh, preview with this book. It is available for purchase right now. Uh, it's kind of a uh, pre-purchase, but you get updates as soon as they are released. You can uh, get email updates that I send out every time I publish a new version. So uh, it's not like you're gonna be missing out on anything by buying it early. I, and like I said, 95% of it is done. I just need to go through and make some updates and edits and kind of proofread everything. Along with that, or on that note, really, uh, I love, or I would love to have your feedback on the content, the pace of the material, the material covered, anything that you'd really like to see covered. I've already had a lot of reader feedback and it's really helped improve uh, what I am covering. So if you do have a chance to pick up a copy, do let me know any feedback that you have or any issues that you have running through it. Um, I am gonna probably have, I'm gonna basically go through all the examples myself again and uh, really formalize this code repo so that all the commits, I, I kind of did it here where I have the uh, commits by the exercise. I'm gonna really um, formalize that now that I've got the exercises uh, set and everything. Uh, regarding the video course that I have, it's still available if you wanna purchase it. I uh, it's, it's pretty out of date by now, so it's still using WebDriver IO, ver WebDriver IO version four. Um, I reduced the price way low because of that compared to what it was before. Um, I just didn't feel comfortable charging the regular price with how outdated it is. But I did still wanna have the content available for anybody interested who, who might find it useful. So kind of give you that option. But right now, if you're looking to get started with WebDriver IO, I definitely recommend using this book uh, because it's the most up to date. And I also really changed my approach with this book to uh, instead of focusing on the little details of WebDriver IO and, and what are all the different commands and everything, I took a different approach here of like if, if I were working with you on a team and we were tasked with writing tests for this project and I'm and you're brand new to WebDriver IO and really UI test automation in general, here's how I would teach you how to do it. So the first thing I would do is I would go in and I would teach you how to write, actually the first thing I would do is teach you how to get WebDriver IO set up, then how to do a basic navigation, how to do basic assertions like I showed you in that navigation file. Then we would go to the sign up page and or the sign in page, see how to enter form details, how to click a sign in button, how to check for error messages, do the same thing for the sign up page, that sort of thing. Then um, we would talk about uh, these article feeds and how to write page objects for them. Uh, if I refresh the page, you can see real quick, it had that little loading articles. Uh, if you were watching, I'll do it one more time. It says loading articles, how to wait for certain things, how to uh, switch tabs and work with that. So that's kind of the approach I took here. Instead of trying to teach you just what WebDriver IO does, I, I more focused on how to how to test a website, how to test a real world website. So um, I'm really happy with that approach and I think it's gonna be a lot more useful for folks out there. Again, you can always read a free sample uh, by going to the website link, which I'll have down in the description, or if you click that big blue button, that'd make me happy and, uh, or just add it to your wish list, whatever. Um, so I will probably be 
probably be doing another one of these. I may also be doing a live stream where I uh, talk about how I set up this demo page and how I get it to refresh content and how I use the real world app and some updates from there. Um, a lot of other content to go through. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for today, though. So until next time, have fun testing.